All right, guys, so continuing our conversation um, with sort of where to start and then also how do you scale sessions, one of the big points of feedback that I was getting was what should my nutrition look like? And of course, this is a massive topic that we're about to go into, um, and it's also highly individual. However, the human body is the human body, and most of us process food in, the similar, in, in a similar way. And so while there are going to be some minor differences or even major differences based on you as an individual, understand that the information and the science on nutrition is largely established. And we understand what each type of food, what role it plays uh, in our body's energy systems and structure, all right? so. Um, Highly individual, yes, but most people fall into um, basically the same sort of utilization of food. All right, now um, I really want you, as we get into this conversation, to think about your nutrition and what it should look like based on four pillars. All right, and we discuss these four pillars at length in our nutrition doc. I'm going to provide a link for that in the description of this video below, also in the email that this video goes out in, as I have been with the other resources that we have been uh, giving you guys as we go through this process together. Um, those four pillars of your nutrition are, number one, qual quantity, how much food you're eating. Number two, quality, uh, the quality of the food that you're eating, whether or not it's basically garbage or not. Um, three, proportion. Um, how much of each of the macros you're eating, and then for timing. Uh, when are you consuming the food to maximize the benefit that you can get from that? Now, with all of these four things that I'm gonna talk about here, quantity, quality, proportion, and timing, um, I'm just gonna give you guys, I'm gonna kinda skim the surface so that you can get a framework for what your nutrition should look like. Uh, again, covered in much more detail in our nutrition doc. Please go and download that. Either click the link below or go to the site, download that nutrition doc. It's gonna walk you through not only some processes that help you figure out, for example, what your metabolic rate is, how many, how many calories you should be eating, uh, but it's also gonna explain a lot of the basics behind these in, in a lot more detail. So with quantity, um, really simply, uh, if you're eating more calories than you burn, you're going to gain weight. Now, the type of gait that you, the, the type of weight that you gain is going to be determined a lot on the, the next two that I'm going to talk about, the quality of the food and the proportion of the macros that you're eating. But regardless, if you are eating more than you burn, you will gain weight. Likewise, if you are eating less than you burn, you're going to lose weight. Again, the type of weight that you lose is really going to be determined by that uh, quality and proportion pieces that we're getting to. Um, so understand that because you can lose fat or you can lose muscle, um, there's really danger in both eating too uh, much and eating too little. It's not like you can just look at the scale and if it's going up and you want to gain, hey, you're good. Or if it's if you want to lose and the number on the scale is going down, you're good. You could be losing muscle or gaining fat when you want to gain muscle or lose fat, right? So it's really dependent on the other pieces and it's important that we understand that these four pillars uh, support one another. Now let's move on to quality. With quality, basically it comes down to this, guys, all right? Eat real food. You know when you're eating garbage, and just try to avoid eating garbage, all right? I'm not saying never have a cheese. it I'm not saying don't ever eat a Snickers bar. You're fine to do that sort of thing. But if that's like a daily habit, uh, or if those snacks start to become larger meals or whatever, uh, then now you obviously are starting to break the protocol that we're looking to establish. All right, so do your best to eat real food. If it grew out of the soil, if it walked the earth or swam in the ocean or flew in the sky, it's probably real, okay? If it comes in a box and has ingredients that you do not recognize as food, it's not real, all right? Food, food, they, foods are ingredients. They don't have ingredients. 
And so keep in mind that quality is just eating real food, all right? If you're eating vegetables, uh, if you're eating uh, things that look like it did whenever it came off the plant, like corn, rice, whatever, you're probably good. Potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, you're probably good. I'm not saying to eat too much of those things, obviously, but to eat quality food and to eat good food. Also, uh, you don't feel obligated to eat organic or anything like that. Conventional uh, GMO foods have the same nutritional quality as, according to most studies that have, uh, that have come out that I've read, that a lot of nutrition people have read. Uh, and so you should not feel like you, if you're, you're not eating quality if you're not eating organic foods. If that matches with your ethics, then please do so. Um, that's going to make you happy. That's going to improve your quality of life. Uh, but at the same time, don't feel like it's a requirement to eat uh, quality food. Now, proportion. Uh, whenever we discuss proportion, what we're really discussing is how, what, what a ratio of fat, carbohydrates, and protein are you eating relative to the total amount of calories you're consuming on a daily or weekly basis. Okay, and the pr appropriate proportion for you is largely going to be dictated by your body type. There are three body types. Um, an ectomorph, slender, tall people, longer limbs, narrow through the midsection. Mesomorph, more of an athletic build, um, pretty evenly distributed. Uh, and then um, uh, uh, the, the, the last one is uh, endomorphs. Um, I drew a blank there for a second. Endomorphs. Uh, endomorphs are uh, typically a little bit broader through the midsection. Um, they're easy gainers. They tend to put on weight a lot easier. Um, so the the proportion uh, of those, the proportion that you eat is going to largely be based on your, your body type or that you should eat. Again, that's in the nutrition doc. I'm not going to go over it now. Um, <clears throat> You should be eating a certain amount of carbohydrates. You should be eating a certain amount of protein. You should be eating a certain amount of fat. None of these are bad, so long as the quantity that you're eating doesn't exceed a reasonable amount for your metabolism and body type, and so long as the quality is good. If the quality of the food is bad, obviously, then you're not going to be getting the appropriate amount of nutrition out of that food. And that can lead to um, overeating or undereating either one, undereating the, the right amount um, of another macronutrient. And so the interplay between quality and quantity with uh, proportion is really, really important. Again, these four pillars support one another. Um, Fourth, timing. The fourth pillar is timing. When you eat matters, all right? And I want to demonstrate this with two examples. Um, number one, perinutrition. Uh, that is the nutrition, that's the food that you consume around a training session. Now, whenever you train, your body burns sugar and it uh, starts to break down um, the protein in your body that is uh, used to or it breaks down, it breaks down muscle tissue, um, which means that you're, uh, you, you have to start to use protein or you need access to protein so that you can move your body from a catabolic state, which is protein breakdown, into an anabolic state, which is protein synthesis, the building of protein from amino acids. Um, the, the less time you spend in protein breakdown and the sooner you get to that protein synthesis, then the greater effect uh, the training is going to have on the adaptation that you can make down the line. Uh, another, another good example of timing and this minimizing time in that catabolic state is with breakfast. Uh, a lot of times, if you sleep eight hours a night, then you're going at least eight hours without getting any sort of nutrition. Whenever you wake up, you're typically in that catabolic state where your body has been using the protein that it has access to, these raw materials that it had access to during the waking hours to repair the muscles that were damaged during the day and to build up all, uh, its raw materials and to create the healthy structures that we need to function during our, our daytime. Well, that means that we're not going to have a store of protein anymore. And so if you're skipping breakfast or if you're not eating a properly balanced breakfast, 
then you're spending more time in a catabolic state or a protein breakdown state than you are in an anabolic state or a protein synthesis state, all right? So when you eat matters. Another good example of this, uh, if I may offer you a third example, is that uh, you know if you're only eating three meals a day, that might not be ideal for you because you may be getting into um, you, your blood sugar may be dropping and they may, may not be staying level. You may be spending excessive amounts of time in a catabolic state when you could be better served to be uh, eating at closer intervals and eating a little bit less for the um, for each of your meals, ensuring that calorie uh, those calories up with uh, some snacks in between meals. Okay, that is something that uh, it can be individualized, um, but. Oftentimes people do benefit from eating uh, smaller meals and then snacks uh, to support the, the calories that they need. Finally, I wanna talk about some starting points for you guys to kind of transform what your nutrition may look like right now. Um, now, uh, these things, you may check off two or three of them, but maybe not all four. Uh, or you may check off none of them. That's why they're challenges for you. Um, and, and, but they're also good starting points to just focus on whenever you're getting into this whole nutrition beast. Tackling it is a really big deal. Um, number one, eat more plants. Um, a lot of times people start to conflate carbohydrates with bread and potatoes and those complex carbohydrates. But whenever you eat broccoli, um, that's a carbohydrate that you're consuming. If you are getting your, the main, if the main source of your carbohydrates are vegetables and uh, especially vegetables, you're not gonna be gaining uh, the wrong type of weight, I promise you, all right? Eat more plants. Now, I know what you're thinking, hey, rice is a plant, um, uh, certainly uh, potatoes are plants. Yes, there's a good chance that you're probably already getting a, a lot of those, uh, or enough complex carbohydrates. There's probably a better than, there's a better than good chance that you're not getting the proper amount of vegetables. So. Uh, Eat more plants in general, stay away from things like bread, uh, and eat more things like sweet potatoes and broccoli and greens, all that kind of uh, stuff. Eat more plants. Two, drink more water. Water is absolutely essential to the way that your body functions. And if you're not getting enough water, then your body is going to have a hard time optimizing the way that it performs and, and the way that it functions day to day. Water helps with absolutely everything, joints, brain function, everything. Three, eat carbohydrates. There's nothing wrong with eating carbohydrates. You will go to no professional weight room or any place where athletes really train and have them not eating carbohydrates. No real athlete is on the paleo diet, okay? None of them. They're eating carbohydrates. They're, and they're eating a proper amount of carbohydrates for their body type and for their activity level, all right? Carbohydrates, are not bad in and of themselves. Too much of them or the wrong quality of uh, carbohydrates can be bad, of course, but that applies to protein and fat as well. Four, sleep and relax. Recreation, uh, rest, sleep, these things are absolutely crucial to the way that all of this stuff works, the way that your body does all of this stuff. If you're not getting the proper amount of sleep, your body is not going to function properly, all right? And also, there is no human out there that can survive on four hours of sleep every night. Uh, there is a range for what is acceptable sleep for people, but it's more like seven hours to nine hours than it is like four hours for like some select special uh, population of people that think that they can just sleep very, very little, all right? Your body and your brain is more similar to everybody else's than not. And you need a proper amount of sleep in order to reset your body, clear out toxins from your brain especially, and reset uh, so that you can form long-term memory, so that you can burn fat the way that you should, and just generally function the way that you should. Um, sleep and relax. Getting the proper amount is absolutely crucial to the way that nutrition is going to uh, work inside of your body whenever you intake that food. All right, um, again, nutrition, this is a huge topic. Um, it is highly individualized. There's lots of factors to consider. Uh, all the while, these things are tr more or less true for absolutely everybody um, on the face of the planet. Um, so read the nutrition doc, uh, check out what we have there. 
shoot me, if you have specific questions, again, uh, shoot them to me. If you want to know, um, if you have another question, if you've thought of a question that you want me to address uh, in these videos, let me know as well. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.